Good morning, folks. We've got to focus on the sun today. All the top stories had either critical aspects of solar physics or the key interactions between the Earth and sun. Not surprisingly, we'll start with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on the sun is dominated by coronal holes, with the incoming active region behind them just south of the equator. Solar wind and solar flaring are both low, calm, and quiet at the moment, but this active region has a light bridge dividing the lead sunspot and with peripheral spots behind it. It may be calm now, but that can change in as little as one hour of umbral field movement. Coronal holes already have enhanced solar wind on deck for us starting later in the week. Let's go to a needed but frustrating confirmation. Some extensions of neutron monitor data hint that there was a large surge in sunspot activity in the late 1930s and into the 1940s. This is untrue, except for the three-year sunspot maximum in the 40s, and indeed that is what they find here. It's frustrating because it took considerable time, effort, energy, and funds to get this out when auroral indices and sunspot observations show pretty clearly Grand maximum was not in the 30s or 40s, it began in the 50s, and the modern maximum period didn't really end until the new millennium. This is important for both climatological reconstructions and analyses, and the tracking of grand solar maxima and minima in search of the next one. We're over next to one of our favorite channels on the internet, Sky Scholar. His recent examinations have shifted from cosmology to astrophysics, and this is where there's actually good enough data and technology to confirm and decide the disagreement between the standard solar model and the liquid metallic hydrogen model. His latest video further explains the beauty of the lattice structure and all that it can do to help solar physics. Head over, get caught up on his last few videos if needed. We are moving toward the finish line on the existing proof that the sun has a real surface. It is worth noting that we've been seeing our own evidence for this for a few years now in the standing waves of sunspot umbra, the heartbeat of the sun. Described here once again in requiring impossible physics to avoid the real surface, they still solidly identify that these are indeed persisting features and were not just anomalous sets of data a few years ago. For those who haven't seen the iris slit jaw images with quick cadence, you can 100% see these waves emanate from the core of the sunspot going outward. Last three links come together nicely as the dynamics of the solar wind and magnetic field of Earth are more complex than the scientists had realized. No kidding. Producing not only the inductions and resonances, but integrating into the geosystem with plasma turbulence and magnetic field transformers. When the particles make it down or are forced down from the Van Allen belts during enhanced solar wind pressure, they cause considerable technological issues just like cosmic rays. They also noticed the statistically significant increase in issues under the South Atlantic anomaly, the weakest part of Earth's field. Those particles were the subject of the titanic work of 2017 out of Harvard Center for Astrophysics, by far their most important solar terrestrial physics paper. It highlighted the ozone-destroying power of these particles, which can overtake the light-producing ozone power during the major storms, and is able to cause not only technological upsets, but rapid temperature forcing. With shifts measured in degrees and lasting for weeks' time if the solar storm hits that threshold event of significant particle penetration, here they have actually quantified the ozone column loss due to those particles and for the exact same solar storm as Harvard dissected from the timeline and temperature perspective. Losing full percentage points of ozone density on space weather timescales has never been put into climate models. It's often missed because the sunlight fills in the blanks within days to weeks, and when you consider that Earth is now rapidly losing its magnetic field and sunspot maximum is on our doorstep, observers' eyes are watching closely. Observer Ranch, folks, is going to happen. The math is the math. Regardless of the Kickstarter campaign will be running soon, the new home of the Observer's meetings will now take the form of a more natural setting and with topically relevant features. You'll have one chance to make your mark on that here with Kickstarter soon. We are well underway with interest in the back 40 acres and... Now the second item under this one is open for interest too. Follow directions on ObserverRanch.com. Good Fly on the Wall podcast for members this past weekend over at SuspiciousObservers.org. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.